Hello and welcome to the Bur Dubai Grand Mosque. This is one of the oldest mosques in Dubai. Initially built in 1900, then it went through some renovation in 1960, and then again finally in 1998, uh, as you can see now. Now the mosque has a very tall minaret, the tower shaped structure that you see on the mosque, which would have, in the old days, somebody would have walked to the top of that to do the call to prayer. Obviously now we have uh, megaphones and microphones to do that. So it's 70 meters high, one of the tallest, if not the tallest in Dubai. And the mosque itself actually has very really unique features. It has 45 small domes and nine large domes, which is quite unique. And when you go outside uh, of the mosque and you were to look you would be able to see these on top of the mosque. So this is a bit of history about the mosque. And as you can see, it has very nice design. And you can actually see some of these domes uh, that are here. You can see internally the domes. And of course, apart from the fact that they are um, kind of Anatolian architecture, at the same time, they would have proved very useful to project sound before the time of microphones. Even as I'm speaking now, I can hear my echo echoing in the domes above me. So they would have served a very good purpose as well to project sound for the Imam, the one who leads the prayer, uh, for the people who are praying. So that's pretty much an introduction to the mosque. What we'll do now is we'll move forward to the front of the mosque and I'll explain to you some of the essential parts of the mosque and essential beliefs of Islam. So here we're now at the front of the mosque and you'll see some very interesting things in front of you. Now, first of all, we have this kind of niche that goes in, known as the mihrab. Now, this is not a must, and if a mosque didn't have this, it would be fine. But the main purpose behind this is it shows the direction uh, of what's called the qibla, the direction towards Mecca, where we face in our prayer. And it also uh, would have definitely served uh, in the past, again, for the echo effect. If the imam, the person who leads the prayer, would have stood there, because it has that niche and it's, it's made of those marble-like uh, material, it would have caused to project his, his sound. So that's what you see right there. Then we have here the, what's called the member. Now this member is particularly high, but a member can be a few steps high. It's basically a pulpit or like a stage where every Friday the Imam, the leader of the prayer, gives like a spiritual reminder or sermon to the general public every Friday. Um, Moving on, we have this very nice golden Arabic calligraphy. Now, many mosques have that around uh, different parts of the mosque. Every mosque has a different verses. There's not a particular verse, but they always choose verses that are very pertinent and have a very important message. So this verse says in Arabic, in akramakum in dallahi atqaqum, that indeed the most noble of you, meaning mankind, humankind, are the ones who are most righteous closer to God. So it's not based upon your wealth or your colour or your nationality. It's based upon how close you are. So now after that we have this interesting digital timetable and this is actually the timetable for the five daily prayers. And because we're here in a mosque and a mosque is a place of prayer, a place of worship, a religious place, I'm going to explain to you in a nutshell the five pillars of Islam. So before I go into the five pillars, we hear the word Islam. What does Islam mean? Now, Islam actually means to surrender or to submit to Almighty God. And this is uh, something which is uh, unique, you could say, to the religion of Islam because it's not named after a person. You've noticed we as Muslims don't call ourselves or our religion Muhammadism. And it's not named after a geographic location. It's a named on the act that everybody should ideally and ultimately do, which is to submit and surrender to the Creator. So that's what the word Islam means. And Muslim simply means the one. You can even see the, the, the similarity there. Islam, Muslim. Muslim literally means the one who is practicing Islam. And also the word Islam does have its root going back. It can be connected to the word peace because ultimate peace in this life and in the hereafter uh, we believe as Muslims can only truly be found in Islam. So now we'll move on to these five pillars. So the first one is what is known as the Shahada. This is the testimony of faith. This is where the person firstly believes in their heart and then they make the statement uh, of that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah, Almighty God, and that the Prophet Muhammad is his last and final messenger. 
And you notice I use the word Allah. We believe that Allah is the unique and personal name for Almighty God. Because even if you look at the word God in a dictionary, it will say to you anything that is worshipped. So it's not a personal name. So we say the personal and unique name for Almighty God is Allah. And then you heard the second part was that the Prophet Muhammad is his last and final messenger. But as we see here, last and final messenger. So we also must believe that there are messengers before him. So we as Muslims must believe in Jesus, that he was a great uh, chosen Messiah and Prophet. We must believe in Abraham and Moses and David and Solomon and Noah and all these prophets. But the big difference is we as Muslims believe that none of them were God or the sons of God or themselves were divine. However, we believe they all came and that they all must have come from the very first prophet to the very last, they had to have come with the same essential message of worshipping God, Almighty God, Allah alone, and submitting to Him. So that's the first testimony. Now the second one goes back to that timetable, the five daily prayers. And these five daily prayers, they're not done by us because Almighty God needs us to pray to Him. If everybody on planet Earth prayed to Almighty God, Allah, he would be the same, he wouldn't increase. And if nobody prayed to him, he wouldn't decrease. He is the same. But it is for us as, as humans. And Prophet Muhammad actually gave a very beautiful example. He was asked about these five daily prayers. He said, imagine if one of you has a house and outside of his house he has a fresh flowing river and he was to go into that river five times a day and bathe himself. He said, would he have any dirt left on him? They said, no. He said, likewise, this is what the prayer does to the person. Now, the third pillar is what's known as zakah. And zakah in Arabic means purification. And this purification here is not related to purification of your body. Rather, it's related to purification of your wealth. And this is only obligatory. It's a must for anybody who has savings. So this would have to be unused for a whole year. If someone falls into that category, they take 2.5% of that and they give it directly to the poor. If you don't have those kind of savings, nothing is expected from you. Then we move on to the fourth pillar of Islam, which is fasting. Now many people wonder, why is fasting, which is abstaining from food and drink, one of the essential beliefs or aspects uh, or foundations of Islam? Let's look at it from the other side. You're going to be fasting, depending where you are, but probably no less than seven hours and maybe even up to 17, 18 hours. During that time, there's going to be plenty of time you're alone. Nobody's watching you. Nobody can see you. You could secretly eat or drink. So to not do that really shows this commitment and this obedience and this surrendering to the Almighty. Countless amount of reward. It's kind of non, you could say, uh, to whomever he wills, he gives them reward for fasting without, without even limit. There's no limitation to the reward for this. And that he loves, that, he loves it when we fast. And that we even believe that in paradise there is a door for those people who used to, used to always fast. So this is the fourth pillar of Islam, the fasting of Ramadan, which means we don't eat or drink anything from just before sunrise until sunset. And of course we know there are many beneficial health aspects to it. You have empathy for those who are less fortunate than you. But the main reason we fast, it goes back to that verse I mentioned, that the best of you are the ones who are most righteous, or most obedient, have the most piety towards the Almighty. And the, the, the main reason we fast is mentioned in a Quranic verse. O oh, you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you like it was the nations before you, meaning the nations of Jesus and Abraham and Moses, so that you may attain piety and consciousness of the Almighty. So this is the main reason that we do this fasting. And now moving on to the final, the fifth pillar of Islam, the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca, which must be done once in someone's lifetime if they have the physical and financial ability to do so. Now many of you may have seen on the news possibly, in Mecca we have the black cube, which is at, uh, well, it's actually covered in a black cloth. It's a structure, obviously made out of bricks, etc., covered in a black cloth. Now if you go inside, it's uh, not that large, and it has pretty much similar to what you see behind me, marble with inscriptions in Arabic, Quranic verses. There's nothing special in there. But we believe as Muslims that this was the first ever house of worship around 500 years or so before any of the sites, even in Palestine, that was built solely for the worship of 
God Almighty, Allah, alone. And we believe it was built by Prophet Abraham and his son, Prophet Ishmael. And you may have seen that the, we go around it, where we circumambulate, we go in a circular motion around the Kaaba. This is imitating the Prophet Abraham, that when he finished building it, he walked around it, praising the Almighty that he'd been able to achieve this. So a lot of the acts we do on this pilgrimage, we trace back to the acts of the Prophet Abraham and the Prophet Ishmael and their family. So those are the five essential pillars of Islam that give you the, the, the main description of Islam. So if anybody was to ask what are the main beliefs of Islam, that's exactly what I've just told you. Now we're going to have a demonstration from my colleague, Mr. Mahmoud, of the call to prayer and an example of how we pray. Very simple, but now you know what you always hear, the very melodious call to prayer. That is what it is saying when we do the prayer call five times a day. As you can see, my, my colleague is given the demonstration of the prayer. Now, the main thing that every Muslim must say in their prayer is a chapter known as the opening chapter, Al-Fatiha. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا so 
this chapter you heard him reciting out loud, the first chapter, this must be read in every one of our prayers and is known as the, you could say the most important or the essential chapter of the Quran known as the opening chapter. Allah Akbar Samiyallahu liman hamida Allah Akbar Subhana Rabbi Allah Subhana Rabbi Allah Subhana Rabbi Allah So you can see my colleague is now in the prostration position known as sujood. This is uh, known as us to be the time you're closest to your Lord because it is the time where you're in complete humility, uh, complete submission and you'll see that his head is on the ground. So as a human, he's at the lowest and most humble and most position of humility that one could be with their face on the ground. And what he's saying here is very interesting. We say, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, praise or glory be to uh, my Lord who is the most high. So it's showing that we at our lowest position are acknowledging that Allah God Almighty, he is the most high. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Well thank you very much for joining us on the virtual mosque tour and we hope to see you hopefully in the future inshallah God willing in person in our mosque tour at the Burj Dubai Grand Mosque once we reopen and things get back to normal so I hope you've enjoyed it and it's been a pleasure from myself your host Ismail Lewis Bullock uh, giving you this tour and please do check out our uh, social media which will be shown at the end of this video for any queries or regarding the mosque or any other queries you may have even about Islam. Thank you. <laughs>